How's it going everyone? I'm Nostalgic Dave and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. This is it. Judgment Day. Today things are going to get settled at last. A lot of things. What's the big idea? Sorry, Nick. I only touched your shoulder. Yes, you gotta remember, she just got shocked with like a thousand watts of it. Oh. Watts? Volts? Which one? I don't know. A lot of energy! A lot of electricity. I guess the shock hasn't worn off from my run in with the stun gun yesterday. Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Dave. Yeah. Thanks, Maya. Hey, Edgeworth. Uh, you okay? Edgeworth is looking glum as always. I hope on Karma doesn't push him too hard. Whoa! What are you doing? Sorry! I'm sorry! Just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. Maya. Maybe you should go outside and discharge. Right, good idea. Why does it take someone reminding you to... Whatever. Try not to electrocute anyone on your way out. Zap! Yeah. Woo! pal! What's gotten into that girl? Detective Gumshoe. Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, good morning. How did it go? How did it go? Blah, 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 blah. I can't. Mm. How did it go, Detective? Have no fear. As promised, I've captured our runaway caretaker. I just brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective. You must be tired. Actually, after that shock I got on the way in, I feel pretty good. What? Okay. Note to self, if you want Kumshu to feel good, shock him. Literally. <laughs> Yogi says he's forgotten his own name. But that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember, and I'm going to prove it. Unfortunately, you gave the paper to Von Karma. Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edward. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready. Did the prosecution actually say that they were ready? Instead of giving a snide remark. I'm shocked as well. Except me more metaphorically. Uh, uh... Right. Very well. We have reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. How is it on the last day he's playing more fair? Um... Come on, don't be awed into silence by every little thing he says. Very well, Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. Why would someone want to confirm they've murdered someone? Why? Who would... Why would a murderer confirm that they're the murderer? I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. What?
that. Very well. Please bring the witness into the courtroom. Oh, stop acting, Yogi! Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives in the Bones Rental Shop on the lake from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Bull crap! Witness? Why did you run away yesterday? The witness was not running away as he will now testify. I I see. Very well. Please begin your testimony. <laughs> what voice did I give you? I'm really sorry about just, just leaving it the way I did. But I wasn't running away or nothing. Hey, uh, we're gonna buy some book for see? I figure I got nothing to do with the incident, anyhow. Or, I mean, I need one of those motor things, right? I don't got one. I know that's not the voice, but I'm pretty sure th this guy bounced between voices. I don't know what voice to give this guy particularly anyway. Oh my that's money after I stand at it. Hmm. Very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? He has to know his own name. Yanni Yogi? You're Yanni Yogi. And I'm going to prove it. Go and impress him on everything. I call what you did running away, not just leaving. You heard Larry's testimony and realized you were in danger. Now, Mr. Wright, there's no need to rush to conclusions. You know I'm not wrong, Von Karma. You know I'm not wrong. As I said, this was not running away. Listen to the testimony. Sure seems relaxed. In fact, they both do. Von Karma and Yanni Yogi. Well, I wasn't running away or nothing. I got went to buy some food for Polly. Yeah, okay. Then why did you leave? about to say why. Is it so hard for you to just quietly listen when someone is talking? If I sat quietly, Edgeworth would be guilty in three minutes. What do you think he's trying to do? Food? Probably is a bit of a gourmet juicy. We only eat the high quality bird palette from France. Why France? Why from France specifically? I don't really have them in big pet shop downtown. <laughs> but you weren't arrested until this morning. Why didn't you go back to the care? That's a good point. I kind of got blocked. <laughs> lost? You got lost. The witness has trouble remembering things sometimes. When the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Yeah, right. Nice try, Von Karma. No one's going to believe that. Hmm, I see. So he was lost. You were saying, Phoenix? Dragon Dragon, uh, nothing to do with it. Yeah, uh huh. this first because I'm not sure I can't remember which one I'm supposed to do. You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Uh, uh yep. Uh yep. Seems like it 
Then how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Yeah. Or maybe you're lying about not having your memory, hmm? You know exactly who you are. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. Ah! How am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old codger's head? It's impossible. I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness. Please continue. I need those motive things. I don't got one. Don't you? Pretty sure this is it. No, it's not. Wouldn't it be, though? It does contradict. This is what I don't like about this game. It's like, you'll have things that make sense, like this. The DL6 incident gives him motive. But for some reason... Whatever. How can you say you had no motive? I say you do. Grudge against Edrith and the victim, Robert Hammond. So he took revenge on them, right? <laughs> Shut up! Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge. It's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. Why did I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes. Yes, Your Honor? You've been saying the same thing now over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of the past or lack thereof into question. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? You more than you think. Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said that it... He has nothing to do with this case, and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. Order! Order! Mr. Wright, there is a serious problem with your claim. Or, are you saying... Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. <laughs> now this is interesting. You know I know who it is, Von Karma. I would like to know myself. So who is he? Don't play dumb, Von Karma. Mr. Wright, please tell us the witness's name. Yanni Yogi. His name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. Yogi. That name seems familiar. Oh! Yanni Yogi, from the DL6, in DL6 incident. It figures the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. But what does this mean? Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. Oh, shut up! Oh, great, you wanted me to say that. Great. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness is you, and Yogi. Fascinating. However, how do you propose we to prove this to the court? You did burn my only piece of evidence. This is a court of law. As you may recall, you need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. That's a fucking lie. This is it. I have to do this now. If I can't prove he's Yogi right here, right now, then I've got nowhere else to go. And just in case I fuck this up... Hmm. 
Nick! How are you going to prove it? How can you prove he's not a yogi? It's okay. It's actually quite simple. Your Honor. Please take the man's finger... Duh. Then we'll compare them to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. I see. That makes sense. Oh, come on! I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Why? The witness has no fingerprints. Does he have fingers? What? What? No fingerprints? He clearly has hands! And fingers! He has to have fingerprints! Uh, you see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at, I worked at a chemical plant. Oh, okay. So you burned him off. Yep. Oh, yep. What? Yogi, you sneak! You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Hmm. Well, the witness has no fingerprints. I guess we will not be able to prove his identity. No! Well, what do you do? What do you. What will you do, right? Uh. It seems that the case has been decided, no? No! I know what happened. I know everything. I, I just can't prove it. But no, I can't let it end like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one. Nick, what are we going to do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? Well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine his parrot for a little comic relief, hmm? Sure! <laughs> yeah, yeah, very funny. You're a sore winner, Von Karma. Wait a sec. Cross-examine his parrot? What is it, Nick? No, you're not going to... Yep. <laughs> Your Honor. <laughs> the defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Take Mr. Von Karma up? On my proposal? Exactly, Your Honor. I'd like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, order! Order! Uh, well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Need you even ask? This is a farce! I object! Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the parrot, Von Karma. Yeah, out of sarcasm. I have a right to do as you suggested. You're so desperate, then please be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this, and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. Nick, this is crazy. Well, still want to go through with your little game? Yeah! Cause why the hell not? <laughs> You stop that. Let the parrot take the stand. I will cross-examine her, Your Honor. This is most this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Juan Karma's rigged every person's testimony, every piece of evidence. Except the parrot. She's my last chance. Well, as of right now, it's except the parrot and Larry. At least, I think so. 
I'd be surprised. Bailiff, bring in the parrot. Hey, Polly. That's quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Name? The witness is ignoring me. <laughs> it must hurt to be ignored by a bird. <laughs> <coughs> Very well, witness. Who is your owner? Please there, testify for us. Hello? Hello? <laughs> That's it. Okay. Hmm. Certainly the most concise testimony we've heard we've had so far. Very well. Begin your cross-examination. Right. What are you going to do, Nick? I... I don't know. I do. What do we do, Maya? Hmm. First of all, not using that controller because that's the one that has the present. What are we supposed to present? Well, okay. Actually, I do need that controller to... Actually, go to the next sections. Hello? Hello? Witness, can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. Maya, you talk to her. What do I say? What's the safe number? Maybe I'll get her to say the number of the safe. Huh? The safe? Why? Let's just try and get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what's the number to the safe in the shack? 1228! 1228! Why? What a reckless parrot. Well, Mr. Wright, you weren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. Actually, it does. <laughs> I almost forgot how to do this, but then I saw that, I'm like, oh! Oh, this is it. That's why I had her say it. Ha! Huh, ridiculous. How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Let me see if I'm right. Isn't that the date of the DL6 incident? 1228. Yep. Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? This! <laughs> the DL6 case file. What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright, where in this file is something related to the safe number? The summary. It's the date! Uh, it's on the case summary page. Case summary. Specifically the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident, December 28th, 1228. Why, that's today's date, 15 years ago. And the number on the safe is 1228, 1228, December 28th. Ah! He used the date of the DL6 incident as the number for his safe, Your Honor. It's a really bad idea! That's how important the date was to him. I see. It certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. Shut up! Bah! This is no tangible proof. I set my ATM card's numbers to... One card, singular, card's number, to 0001, because I'm number one. This has nothing to do with the date. Nothing. Hmm, indeed. Alone it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We need some other cor corroborating evidence. Okay. Where am I going to find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more. 
just get one more piece of evidence. Right. But what? Very well, witness. You may continue. Oh, crap, crap. I didn't mean to do that. Ah! Okay, we've heard this. What's your name? Maybe I should get her to say her name. Polly! Polly! What's your name? Polly! Polly! It's all right. I think we've established that this parrot's name is Polly. Does this have anything to do with her owner's identity? Yep. I do remember this. This little detail, I do remember this detail. Yes, it does. Ha! Huh. Fascinating. You claim that the parrot's name will approve her owner's identity? On its own, no. But I have also other evidence already, so... Get ready to be blown away, Von Karma. Then show us this proof. It's the same thing! Don't you think you're taking this bluffing a little too far? Listen. We're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All you have to do is type the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor, the proof that the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity is... I think it's this at least. The DL6 case file. Um... Court bailiff trapped in an elevator with Edgeworth's... Memory lost due to oxygen deprivation after his arrest fiance Polly Jenkins committed suicide. There we go. Right there. The DL6 case file. What? That's quite a large file you have there. Oh, the game probably wanted me to do this one first. Which page is this proof on then? Show us or stop wasting our time. Hmm. Very well. Mr. Wright, please show us the page. Suspect. Where in this file the information connected to the parent? Suspect data. It's on the suspect data page. This page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide, see? Hmm. Indeed. It does say that, yes. What was his fiance's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly? Bingo! He wanted to remember the name of his fiance who had committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see. I guess that is possible. Shut up! Bah, a mere coincidence, that's all. Not a, at this point, there are too many coincidences to just call it coincidence, dude. Shut up. Shut up. No. Just, just, no. Shut up. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does this make you my granddaughter's fiancé? I wouldn't want to be your granddaughter's fiancé for the life of me! She's only seven years old. That would be one reason why, but the other is that I'd be related to him, and yeah, no thanks. That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence, that's all. No. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. What are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop. Immediately. Witness, tell us your name. Wait! This witness said he doesn't remember. No, it's okay. Alright, I'm not going to use that other voice anymore just because he's not acting anymore. No, it's okay. <sighs> I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, 
looks totally different. This is the real Yogi. I think. Finally. He's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. Acting. For 15 years. Well. Let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. Fifteen years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. Order! Order! Yanni Yogi. So was it you who killed Robert Hammond? And tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Yes, it was me. I did it. They put me on witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond, he said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent, get me off the hook. So, I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really, but he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiance, my social standing. Then, this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought this was my chance at, after 15 years. This was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. W wait a moment. Revenge against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Well... On karma, where's Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. Then, the defendant Miles Edgeworth is innocent. In this case, at least. Hmm. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for this particular case. So I would like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. The score finds the defendant Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Again, the outline makes me think of red white from earlier. That is all. This court is adjourned. Objection! What? D did someone say objection? Wasn't Von Karma. No, that was Edgeworth. Wait, but that means. No. Edgeworth? Your Honor! I object to your judgment. Why? What do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. Shut up! <laughs> As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick! Edgeworth is trying to confess. He's going to say he's guilty. He's going to tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He's going to tell them he killed his own dad. Uh oh. What do I do? The judgment has already been passed. I object to Edris outburst. Didn't something like this happen yesterday, too? Fudge. He's right. Dang it! 
I believe a certain witness raised an objection after a guilty verdict was passed. Fine. We must hear this new statement. We must hear Miles Edward. He's right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. Crap! For 15 years, I have a recurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean in the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it, was it wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer? The criminal in the DL6 incident? It was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I am guilty for DL6, the statute of limitations of which ends today. The culprit is me. No, it's not! I refuse this! I refuse this! Order. Order. This is certainly unexpected. The defense declared innocent is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statute of limitations runs out today. Yes, we already covered this. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Bah. It's obvious. We hold a trial. Right here, right now. You just lost to me on one. Are you sure you want to do this again? Are you sure you want to tangle with me at this point? We tried this man for his crime of 15 years ago. I think, I think I would like to take a five minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. Damn it, Edgeworth! I'm sorry, right? Just wasted all of your effort. Mr. Edgeworth, I don't believe it, sir. I mean, you kill your dad? I didn't want to believe in myself, Detective. But, it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy! Just crazy! Nick? What are you doing? Huh? Oh. I was just reading through the court record once more. Getting my case ready. Your case? For what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm going to prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. What are you talking about, pal? He just admitted to it. He confessed that he did it. In court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth. But I don't believe your nightmare. What? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. Right. He's starting to feel sympathy. <laughs> now then, I would like to resume our trial. Judge, Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Sound reason. For once. <laughs> then, though pointless, let the defense do their cross-examination. Yeah, that's what she said last, the last day, two days, and each time it ended up having more point than you thought. The statute of limitations on the DL6 incident runs out today. Though, it's unconventional for me. I'd like to run this one by the book. And you haven't, well, obviously you haven't been doing that in the past couple days, but apparently to you it doesn't matter now. I see. 
Does the defense have any objections? Nope. No, Your Honor. On Karma, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth, I am a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. No, it's not! Then testify about the matter to the court. <sighs> when Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That will be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Please, please. Are you trying to get a hold of your sister, Maya? That day I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. Okay. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. It was a terrible scream, I remember it to this day. And there was a blackout too, wasn't there? That is all. Hmm. And until now, you thought this dream, this memory was a dream? We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out and I lost my memory of the events. Bah! The same claim Mr. Yoki has made. Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, please. Is Von Karma really trying to pull the boy who cried, or not the boy who cried wolf, the, uh, well, yeah, no, yeah, no? Maybe? Is he trying to pull that card on me? Really? Yes, Your Honor. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. Yeah. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck. Didn't that create a blackout? So, there were three people, including yourself, trapped in the elevator? Yes, myself, my father, and Yanni Yogi. We were fine at first. But then, as time passed, and no one came to help. They lost their composure and began to argue. I was surprised you didn't. You are you were a child. I figured you would lose yours first. There was a single gunshot. Wait. Let me check something. In an elevator return. The murder weapon was fired twice. Then. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Objection. Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and the scream. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. No, your honor, unfortunately, you don't. Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. Should we say the defendant's testimony? You 
do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? I don't accept this evidence. Unless you can tell us what page it's on. The victim. Which page contradicts Miles Edwards? The victim data, because at the end it says there were two shots fired, not one. Look at look at the <laughs> Look at the victim data in this file. It says it quite plainly. The murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot. Yet, the murder weapon was fired twice! First shot was the accident firing when the pistol was thrown. So, who fired the remaining shot? Was there perhaps another shooter who fired the second shot? What? Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when the second shot was fired. might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Hmm, I see, I see. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with this case? I don't know! I'm just going to assume so. Your Honor, I think I will be able to show you proof. What? Impossible! No, no, Mr. Von Karma, save your surprise. Or after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show us your proof. Do you have evidence that the second firing of the pistol is related to the incident? Mr. Wright, please think how we feel about having to look at this evidence time and time again. Every time you show us ridiculous evidence, I feel well mocked. Haha, <laughs> uh, I mean, I really don't mean any harm by it, Your Honor. Not meaning any harm. And not doing any harm are two different things, Mr. Wright. Try again. It's not that. Do you have evidence that the second firing of the pistol is related to the incident? Is this just going to be excessive showing of the same one thing? Oh, wait. Wait. It's this. Look at this photograph. This is a photo of the scene of the crime. 15 years ago. I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edward. This proves that the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. So let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots are fired. Where? Are you blind? Because obviously he was shot with one. We already know that. There's the other one, right there. I was pushing A, not X. As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see. A bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yet there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. 
Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired the second shot. Deductive reasoning. Order. Uh, order! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots are fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot had he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. M Mr. Wright, who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course. Oh, shut up. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright. Look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. That's a bit problematic. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. The second bullet has never been found. Anybody who's already played this game probably already knows what I'm thinking. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. What that claimed Gregory Andrus' life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter, the whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made the bullet hole in the door. Order! I will have order! Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly, that the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked the second bullet. Well, I wouldn't say that because the police have a tendency to overlook a lot of things in this game, so... So, all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Gah. How did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? I... It... It looks like I was wrong. Nick! If the second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjectures are for nothing. No! But you said you'd do it, Nick. You said you'd get Edward declared innocent. I'm sorry. It's just, when I saw the photograph, I thought the two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it. I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person. Someone else who fired the killing shot. And now... I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick! Well, it seems that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial list so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I do not. So you killed your father, though that was not your intent. I would have just said intent rather than intention, which is why I legitimately said it. <sighs> yes, I did. 
no. He's accepted the guilt. Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day on court. There's so many things I know I should be saying. But my mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. Mr. Wright? Your Honor, I, I object. Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object? Hmm? <sighs> Nick? I, I don't know. This case is perfect. Oh no. Gah! It must exist. Mia! The, s the second bullet! That's a voice I have not used in a very long time. What? What did you just say? N nothing. The second bullet must exist. But where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not going to produce us any answers from Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor. Hmm? I, uh... The, the second bullet, it, uh, it existed. What? But we've just heard proof that it did not exist. I, I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. It, it's just someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But, who? Not like the person had a choice. The the the, the murderer. Thanks, Captain Obvious. The murderer. Then tell us just who is this murderer. I'm still thinking about that one. Hmm. So the criminal took the second bullet. But why? Huh? First of all, how would they have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for the bullet? Oh, which one would match more? I know what the answer is, but I can't remember which one of these matches it more. Why would the murderer have spent the time to look for this stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Uh, um... Bah. The murderer had no reason to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Ugh. Had to take it. Had to take it. The murderer... What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Mr. Wright? I yes, Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, uh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But, uh, the murderer had to take the bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? Well, for instance... For instance what?! Uh, maybe the bullet, uh, hit the murderer. Bingo. The bullet hit the murderer. J just saying, for instance. Hypothetically. I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's not like you could perform surgery right there. Y you know? Wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head, but what if that's really what happened? He finally gets it. Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer themselves was shot. 
and they left with the second bullet still inside of them, thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime. Uh, yes. I guess that's how it would work, yes. You guess? That's how it worked. That's how it happened. But there's a problem with that. The, only, the other two people rescued from that elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean the murderer came from outside. Yes. The two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges and the bullet. The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Mr. Wright, you are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. Oh, shut up! What are you saying? Deny it! Deny it! No one involved with the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Huh? I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy? Remember what Mr. Crossbrook said yesterday? What? Gregory Edward dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. I don't remember what the voice I gave you. I do too. I can't do this many voices. Wow. Must have been quite a shock from Bon Karma. Took a vacation for several months after the. Oh! Yes, an unusual event for the man. And for those of you who haven't played this, probably already are starting to figure out what actually happened. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Yeah, that seems a bit abnormal. What if Von Karma didn't take the vacation because of shock? But took it because he was injured. Yep. Nailed it. Now how do we prove it? <laughs> what you mean? It could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He was the man who got who shot Gregory Edward. It was Von Karma. Oh, man. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? You seem dazed. Uh, n no, Your Honor. Well, you have indicated the possibility that the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh-oh. Should I come out and say it now? Say it now! Let the whole world hear! Your Honor, there is a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? F -f 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 uh, my hands are shaking. F -f -f what? Von Karma! Von Karma? What is with that maniacal grin, Von Karma? You mean the Von Karma? The prosecutor? The, the one standing right there. Bah. You don't object? <laughs> I see no need. Why honor this ridiculous outburst with my objection? Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? 
So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident. Oh, sorry. Injury. Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needs. I would have needed surgery, no? Where did I go under the knife at Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. <sighs> Nick, let's find out who this doctor is. It's no use. E Edgeworth? I know Von Karma, perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He's prob he probably didn't undergo surgery. That would leave a doctor as a witness. Ah, nobody's that perfect. So? So what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out himself? The only other thing I could have imagined happening, and I thought this, because at this point, when I first played the game, at this point, it kind of was obvious to me. It's, it's Von Karma. But the only thing that could come to mind, if he was shot, if he didn't get a surgeon or anything, then the only thing that would make sense to me is if he got, like, like, waited for his skin to heal over the wound or something. There would still be marks. What else is new? But, yeah, he would have to wait for, like, his skin to heal over whatever wound the bullet made. That's insane. Hypothetically. No, he could have have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere, but where? Well, Mr. Wright, can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? It's impossible to prove. Be impossible to find the doctor who operated on Von Karma now, even if Von Karma did undergo surgery. <laughs> it seems you have finally come to your senses. More than you would like. You're, you've realized the truth. You can't... You know what? Fuck you. Object. Objection. I object to that. I'm literally just shaking my hand. Okay. But yeah, I object to that. You've realized the truth. You can't prove something that didn't happen. Oh, I can prove it. I just can't show evidence. Ugh. Nick. The court record. What? There must be something. What could possibly be in the court record? Not this. At this point, it has to be something for the DL6, so... Taken from Gregory Edward's heart. Oh! Oh, duh! Ballistic markings. God, There's no time. I better think on it as I go. Alright, Von Karma, I'll prove it. And I'll even use evidence. I know how you like it so much! What? The evidence that proves Von Karma was shot is... If anything, it'd be this. What exactly is that? Penalty. I'm really not sure how I managed to make it this far. Mr. Wright, please reconsider your evidence. The evidence that proves Von Karma's shot is... If it's not the ballistic markings, it's really only... Wouldn't... God damn it. There are only other two pieces of evidence. Luckily, I have two more chances, so... <laughs> I would say it's this, though. Are you kidding me? Damn it! Okay, just in case I screw this up. And there's no way in hell this can prove it. It's just not possible. 
And the rest of the stuff isn't even from the DL6. It has to be this. It has to. How is that not it? How is that not it? What? I have no idea how I'm supposed to prove this. I have officially been lost. I did the I did the bullet first, right? I'm not an idiot. I'm pretty sure I did the bullet first. Just in case the game's being stupid, I'm going to show the bullet again. Games have done this to me before. Look, DL6 bullet. X! How is that not it? There is literally no evidence I've got here that makes sense. And I can't show the. I can't show an image of Bon Karma himself. I should be able to. What the hell do I do? Should I just go through every single piece? It just came to me. Well, karma is perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery, leaving an evidence trail. Tra yeah, yeah, trail. So then I ask, where is that bullet now? I think it is unlikely that Von Karma performed surgery on himself. You, you don't mean. Yep, I do. There is the possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma. That would explain this little animation. It, is that even possible? For all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. We could use the metal detector. Well, Von Karma, I'm gonna run this over you and see what we find. Generally, you wouldn't use a, that kind of metal detector, but same basic idea. <laughs> the, 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 this response proves he's guilty. I, I refuse. Y you refuse? But refusing this means you acknowledge that you that the bullet is still inside you. Order, order, order! Your Honor, defense requests that we be allowed to use the metal detector. Judge, I call for suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. Objection. Not in this case. The statute of limitations runs out on this case today. It was you said we had to end it right here, right now. You dug your own grave, Karma. You dug your own grave. Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. There you go, there's the bullet. It reacted, something's inside his right shoulder. That's what I don't get, why is he, why is he squeezing his left? Like, okay, he's squeezing his left shoulder when it's on his right. 
I know. I did my left and my right and left instead of left and right just to show left. The... <laughs> I did the opposite so you guys could see left and right. Shut up. <laughs> the bullet. Mr. Von Karma. You. It was you. I was afraid this would happen. And so I remained silent. Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. Can you prove that? You're always saying evidence is key. If you can't prove it, why should I be a what, what? I just showed enough evidence to say that it was you. Prove to me that it wasn't. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. Fine, let's remove it and try. But Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Prove. I have no obligation to prove anything. Bull crap. It is Mr. It is Mr. Wright who must prove something here. Not I. Yeah, what? What the hell do you want me to prove, you a-hole? Mr. Wright? Well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet is in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can't. Oh, really? You don't have any of the DL6 evidence. And this is where Maya's help really came in. Right here. Right now! Watch me kick your rear end, Von Karma. That's because you took it out of the records room yesterday. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. Suck a... Suck one of these. Ow. <laughs> Bite my finger. No, I'm the one who's sorry, Von Karma. What? You were close. One day away from freedom. But you see, I have proof. What? Who would have thought you would dig your own grave trying to convict Ashworth? I can link the bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. This is where I use the ballistic markings. Okay. But that's... A bullet? Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely, with all the ballistic markings intact. Just with that statement, Von Karma probably already knows where I'm going. Ballistic markings? You may recall the term. It came up the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from the gun are marked with the weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired the bullet. It's quite accurate. At this point, Farm Karma probably knows exactly where I'm going in this frightened to death. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Etra's heart. The other, Mr. Von Karma, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We could analyze both bullets. Then, if the markings matched, we would know that both, that both bullets had been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol. In the other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, you will let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. 
then we will compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Bon Karma? Okay, I'm not making that noise. I'm not making that. Nope. Not happening. Nope. Nope. Uh-uh. That scream. I've heard that scream before. Wait. I know. Yep. Help, I can't breathe. Quiet. Sit quiet. You're not making this any easier. Stop breathing my air. I'll... I'll stop you. Stop breathing my air! Get away! Get away from my father! And then that. That exact same scream happens. It's that scream I heard in the elevator. 15 years ago. Von Karma! It was you who screamed! And there you go. That proved your innocence right there, Miles. Sivan Karma! Oh! <laughs> I'm not even gonna bother trying to go back and read that! So, it was you. You and your father are my curse! Your father shamed me with a penalty on my record! And you, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade! I, I'll bury you! I'll bury you with my bare hands! Death! Death! Fifteen years earlier. Chief Prosecutor, I am sorry. Well, Karma, it's not like you to make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I was careless. I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. I've covered for you in the past, but not this time. Edgeworth. It was a shock like none I had ever known. Me? Penalized? It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly, I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The light must have gone out. I went out into the hall and felt my way to the elevator. I pressed the button, but nothing happened. Then... There was a noise. The bang. I was in pain. A horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Just then, the lights came back on. The elevator door opened before my eyes. I saw three people inside, all lying unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then, it was destiny. Got lazy and used the same animation, huh? Okay. <laughs> In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died, never knowing who had shot him. Later, he spoke through a medium blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. <laughs> Who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge? What? What are you doing? Do your job or bring it into this miserable shrine. Now! End it. Very well. It appears that we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. I almost gave you Edgeworth's voice. <laughs> Fifteen years later. Mr. Miles Edgeworth? Yes, your honor. You were innocent, 
You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Edgeworth, not guilty. Yeah. That is all. The court is adjourned. I'm gonna move this down a little bit. I can't move it down a little bit. Okay. Eh. Eh. Nick! Nick, we did it! Did you see his face? Oh, Carl looked even paler than usual. He's pretending to be all cool, but inside he crushed him, Nick. Crushed! I gotta say, I'm impressed. <laughs> it was pretty close, though. I was sure we'd had it. I know. I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. But now it's all just a good memory. So it's finally over, Edgeworth. Right. Yeah? I... I'm not sure how to say this. Okay, so you're one of those type of people. You can't say thank you, can't say I love you, that kind of stuff. You just can't. You want to, but you can't. Then again, you've been... I want to say mentored, but tormented would probably make a better term. By Von Karma for 15 years now, so... Doesn't surprise me. I know, I know. Try thank you. I, I see. Th thank you, right? You're welcome. That's a little awkward. <laughs> just just a little bit. I think you could have done better than that. Oh, come on, Maya. We tried. S sorry. I'm not good at this sort of thing. Yeah. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. I can't speak proper. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. He's got you there. Whoop! What? Amazing, pal! You pulled through just like I thought you would. I'll never forget this. I owe you one, pal. And tonight, let's party. Dinner's on me. Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month. But who cares? Uh, don't you need that for, like, rent or something? <laughs> See, Mr. Edgeworth? You should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. No. That's how Gumshoe says that. Don't do that, Edgeworth. Please don't. Hmm? I, I see. <clears throat> oh, no. Don't. Don't do it. Whoop! <laughs> okay. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> I... I feel foolish. <laughs> Good. Don't worry. Take it. Take it a little at a time. You'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this unguarded. Hey, y'all! Hi, Lana! <laughs> Lana! Y'all were great in there! Thank you. Yo, Edgeworth, congrats! Uh. Thank y'all very much. Oh god, Edward, don't do that! <laughs> I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. No, 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 no. Ugh, Lada! Lada, no! That this is just a lot of no. Yes, pun intended. Just look at you. You wouldn't stick your head in the cookie jar even if no one was there. That's uh, probably not true, actually. <laughs> you were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, let bygones be bygones. Let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lana? Oh, speaking of which, what are you doing la- Oh my god! Speaking of which, what are you doing la- Ugh, I give up. <laughs> what are you doing now, Lana? Who, me? Oh, coming back to college. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer, 
pretty quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Larry? Is he behind me? Huh? It's over, Nick! My life is over- AGAIN?! What is it this time, Larry? Why is that face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick! I'm not long for this world! Uh, you don't look sick. It's Keonce! She's going to live in Paris! Paris, Nick! She's leaving me behind! Should have seen that coming. Yo, Edgy! There you are! Um, yes, here I am. Congrats, Edgy. Here, a little gift for me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you. Yeah, it's the gift that's gonna make you even more shocked. Harry Butch, you coming along tonight too? My treat, pal. Huh? Uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Yo, yo, Nick. That's the suit that questioned me. When he says treat, that's not police talk for prison food, right? Right? No, it's not. I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right? Yeah? What's up? That envelope that Larry gave me, it's got money in it. Well, yeah. That's not, the, that's not that strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. It's not the money that's strange, it's the amount that's strange. It's $38, right? You do remember! <laughs> Huh? What a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. Wow. How do you not notice this off the bat? Thirty-eight dollar. Wait, thirty-eight dollars exactly? And then Nick, wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Archworth in school? Thirty-eight dollars. No. No! Larry, it was you? Wow! What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? Didn't we talk about this, like, either last episode or the episode before? I think it was last episode, actually. Didn't we talk about this last episode? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored, so he came in to school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I never was good at history. <laughs> oh, shut up, Larry. Edward. You didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah. Too well. Right. You may not know this, but we used to hey, we used to have a saying back in school. When it, when it smells, it's usually the butts. Well, it's something. Yeah, same thing in this case. I know, I know. Really, right? I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Especially for how persistent you are, Phoenix. Well, this sure is an unexpected turn of events, eh? Edgeworth? Hmm? You should have told me! No, no, Nick. It was 15 years ago. Don't you think the statue. <laughs> I'm not even going to finish that sentence. I'd say so, yes. There you have it. Ugh. Where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did. Well, you have always been something of an insufferable emotionalist. 
Yeah. And you get worked up too easily, too. Death! The death sentence for both of you! <laughs> okay, you need to calm down, Phoenix. Man, if only I... If I only... If I only had known, I'd have become a prosecutor. That's not why you became a defense attorney in the first place. I mean, may maybe it gave you that giant push, but that's not why you became a defense attorney, and you know that. The same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth. Want to switch right? <laughs> um, uh, it's a bit too late for that, don't you think? Plus, aren't lawyers supposed to do, like, both? They're just assigned one or the other? Mm. Hey, y'all! Line up! I'll take a photo! That's better! That's what I was looking for earlier. Hey, photo time! Let's go! And after that, dinner on me! Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town... Oh my gosh. Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom. Even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. Why is he in detention? It's over. It's done. He's innocent. We've already proved this. Whoa. I went a little overboard yesterday. My head hurts. How much drinking do you need to do, dude? Huh? It's still only five. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Hmm? What's this? A letter? Good morning, Nick. You were real impressive yesterday. Seeing you, you made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium, and training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Archworth, too. I wanted to help you, but I couldn't. I was useless. You still believe that? So I've decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium, for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. G goodbye What time is it? Gah! The first trains for the mountains have already left. To the station! I guess I'm too late. Well, hello there. The Nick. Maya. So, you're leaving? Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. You good, okay? Whoa, wait, wait! Holy yeah, that. <laughs> wait, yes, that! <laughs> What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yes. Only her voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped in Mr. Crossberg and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. No. There's something else you did, you know. Well, I guess she doesn't. Otherwise, she wouldn't admit this. But you were the one who stopped Von Karma, Maya. Huh? I, I didn't do anything. Physically, you did more than you think. <laughs> All I did was wander around in the days. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. E evidence? Show my some evidence to cheer her up. A bullet? Von Karma was convinced he had taken all the evidence pertaining to DL6. But you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. 
This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm going to complete my training and come back. Okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run that office by yourself. You're helping. Cheer Maya up and she becomes a dick. <laughs> I'm just messing around. Uh, I don't know about that. So, this is it. See you soon. See you soon, Maya. Thanks. Thanks. Nick. So my story ends. Time to turn a new page and say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now a new story begins. With the same old crazy cast of characters. Ha! Huh. Don't think you've graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink your claim. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh-oh. Got a bad feeling about this. All right, that was Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Well, the main story of it. There is still one more uh, trial left to do. Hey, pal, Mr. Redford came down. Okay, I'm not gonna be able to read these. Whoa, 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 okay. <laughs> what? So this is what the third visual novel I've done but yeah there is one more uh, trial it's kind of the main story kind of just ends here so whether I do it or not it, I, it it won't be off the bat I'll probably move on to something else for now so this will be it'll be kind of bonus episodes it'll be like under extras or whatever Either way, I am going to leave this uh, particular one here. Now, I do want to talk about what I like about the game, what I like that they improved, etc., etc., really quick. It's been out for a while, but I do like the change in the graphics. It's not much different. Um, if you guys have seen the thumbnails for like the previous episodes that I've done, you probably noticed that some of them actually have sprites from the older game, just kind of as reference. Um, but for like, for this it was, this is definitely like, it, they, it's not just the sprites either, like, it, it flowed, it's, the flow on it is a much better, I think, it's, it is the same story, but. I don't know. I, I played the original one. I like. I do like the mechanics behind it. I do like. It's not much of a change as far as this goes, but they had like if, if for those who have played the original three, not in the trilogy version, but like the originals. What I liked, what what I didn't like back then is they couldn't decide like how they wanted like the like how many choices you had, how that worked. They had like different choices they couldn't decide. But in this, in the trilogy, and this happened in this, happens in the other two games too for those who haven't played the trilogy, what I like is that they particularly focus on one kind which helps you kind of get used to it and it's a very simple way of going about it. Um, that's one thing I like about this. Uh, that's the one thing I like about the change. The two things I like about the change. The graphics and the final decision to pick one specific way to go about it. Um, now about the game itself, one of the things I definitely like, it, it's it's different from main visual novels, like just general visual novels. It takes that and gives you like, 
If it was, I would say if it was just the story itself and you didn't have like the option to choose different things, it wouldn't be much of a game. It would be impossible to get a game over because you wouldn't have like ways to do it. So if it wasn't like choice based, like trying to decide between specific things and having like right or wrong answers, then it would, you might as well just make it a normal visual novel, but that, that, that's one unique thing about it. The fact that it takes four different trials and kind of ties together one long story coring on one specific aspect. And this is the case with all three games, actually. Something I like about all three games. Uh, it's just it cores one specific story into four separate trials. And again, this is not including like the bonus um, episode that comes after the four in this game. Uh, but I really do like it a lot. And I've played this game, what, maybe three other times aside from this playthrough here. Definitely something I enjoy doing. And I'd definitely be willing, hello, to do it again. Mia is catching my attention more than anything else. Just because it's different from the rest. Also, I love how Maya just hops in with, like, the victory sign. That's awesome. What? Oh. Yeah. As I said, not done yet, but I'm going to save this for a different time. Brand new episode, bonus episode has been added, but it's completely separate from the story, which is why I'm saving it for later. But, for now, this will be the end of the main Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney trilogy trilogy remake uh, series. Thank you guys for watching this. Uh, if you haven't seen the other episodes yet, um, you may get confused on the details or you want, want to watch the rest of the series or whatever your reason. I'll have a link to the playlist for the uh, the first game here, just right across from my head here. If you want to check out any other, any of the other two visual novels as of now that I've done in the past, uh, click the box down over there. Got any suggestions for any other visual novels you'd like me to do? Let me know in the comments below. For right now, though, um... I don't know if I'll end up doing this for, uh, or not, but because of that, just in case, for now, if not, then thanks again for watching. Either way, I'm out, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!